So what if we were to really make, you know, networking is a peer to compute and storage. And so, you know, Nicera was there, Citrix was there, Intel was there, and TT was there. And we all came in with different ideas about how, because no one's built networking as a service like that before. Yeah. So what do we do? And we distilled it down, distilled it down, distilled it down, and that's why it's called quantum, because it's meant to be the most basic elemental part of what you needed to create essentially isolated network segments so that an application developer, if they want to do a three-tier application and they don't want to have their database yeah. be routable from the internet, they could create multi, they could their own logical overlays, their own you know abstraction of the infrastructure. Um, and we could all agree, yeah, that, that's what we, you know, let's go and work on that together. Good. Um, now, I know we, we talked a little bit about, you know, misunderstandings and the like. Quantum is not competitive in any way to any kind of Cisco technology, right? It's quantum, no, we no. should think of as an abstraction layer for technologies Thank that you. would enable Cisco's Thank to you. put can words I, in your mouth. Is I, that right? Can I quote you on that? Sure. Yeah, exactly go ahead. Right. That's exactly what it is. I'll quote it, myself. It, it's <laughs> meant to be a, a software abstraction yep. of underlying infrastructure. And, and also, but then more than just an abstraction, a set of APIs that now developers of applications can call to realize those abstractions. Yeah. So a developer can say, create me a virtual network. I want to call it my red network or blue network. Yeah. And now put these virtual machines on it. And now I want to create another isolated network. And I want to have control over IP addresses. And I want, but now these are realized then by the lower layers of the infrastructure, because at the end of the day, you still have to send bits over a wire. And so quantum allows us to have that service that the bottom layer of which, in many ways, you can think about it as a device driver, maybe equivalent, which actually talks to physical hardware or talks to virtual switches, which in many ways are follow the same kind of a model. So that you can now create the instantiation of those abstractions for the for the application in a multi-tenant environment. Good. Uh, now, understanding, of course, that it is that you know orchestration abstraction layer from a macro Cisco context. How does that roll into you know Cisco One and the whole idea of the programmable network? Right, right. I'm just laying these on easy for easy lobs. These are these are easy, easy lobs. Easy, yeah. I've written about Cisco once yeah, or twice. Yeah, yeah. So would it would it you need to have that abstraction up to the application layer? Because everything that we're doing in software-defined networking, yeah. Cisco One, even at the virtual switch layer, you, that's not a convenient interface for a, in applications, particularly in a multi-tenant cloud, to have access to those. So it's, if you want to, you know, you need to be able to mediate between what an application's wanting and what all the other apps are wanting. So that we're, the quantum plug-in architecture allows us to plug in then Cisco's Technology such as interfaces in the Cisco One, things we're doing with One PK, things we're doing with Nexus One KV on Linux. So those things then can be plugged into the bottom of Quantum, and a competitor or you know another implementation can plug in other implementations into that Quantum layer as well so to have a different instantiation of the network. So in many ways, the the, the re and one of the real reasons why Cisco is involved with OpenStack is to enable to the exposure of these capabilities that we will have in our infrastructure, that we have today in our infrastructure and going forward, up into the application world. So it's not just network operators who are having programmatic access to the infrastructure. Now application developers can have programmatic access into the infrastructure. Good. Um, and then in terms of uh, Cisco's OpenStack edition, or Cisco OpenStack edition, to refer it correctly, uh, I know it's now freely available, etc. but is there a plan to have that as a actual Cisco commercial product with all the associated support, contracts, services, etc.? Right now we are making this a free contribution back to the community. Okay. And therefore it's going to be community supported through discussion forums, mailing lists, etc. And the, the intent there also, it's right now built around Ubuntu is to work with other dis distributions. Sure. I hesitate to call it, that's why we're actually calling it an, a, an addition, yeah. because our intent not is to not get into the software distribution business across everybody's platforms and everything else. That's heavy work that we want to see the 
you know, the Red Hats and Canonicals and everybody else who wants to be in that business doing. So we will, we were thinking of Cisco editions for those different distributions, which would include then the Cisco capabilities to talk to the Cisco infrastructure. And we, and we also saw that many of the, what we're trying to do is make it easier for customers to bring up OpenStack in production. So we included a lot of the other components that you need if you're really going to run in production around monitoring. Yeah. around high availability. So we incorporated a number of other open source sure. components because that's realistically what you run in production and making it easy to install that through Puppet Script. What's the overlap and overlay between what's going on in OpenStack Quantum and what's going on in the Open Networking Foundation? Are they two separate and distinct groups or is there an overlap? Uh, no, I think that they they work well together. There are different layers. I think I think of the what we're doing at OpenStack is a platform to support people who are writing applications sure. on top of a cloud platform. And a lot of everything that we're doing with ONF and everything else is much deeper into the network in terms of using OpenFlow protocols to to you know direct the operations of different routers and switches. So it's at a lower layer. So therefore, we've seen, I think, a lot of people who are looking at OpenFlow controllers and other things making a plug-in for quantum because it, it exists at a, at, a, at a layer above what we're seeing at the, yeah. at the SDN layer. 